The Fighting Sullivans were five brothers stationed on the same ship during World War II. What could possibly go wrong? Our story here starts at Pearl Harbor and the death of Bill Ball, one of 1,100 men who died aboard the USS Arizona. Bill was from Waterloo, Iowa, and was the boyfriend of Genevieve Sullivan, who had five brothers. George, Francis, Joseph, Madison, and Albert, or George, Frank, Joe, Matt, and Al. Can't really make George any shorter. The five brothers decided they needed to avenge their friend's death, and therefore they enlisted in the U.S. Navy under the stipulation that they would all be stationed on the same ship. And that ship was the USS Juno. Now, the Juno with the Sullivans in tow took part in the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal in November of 1942, and they were hit by a torpedo and had to fall out of action due to the damage. After the battle, as the ships were heading back to their base, the Juno was hit with another torpedo, this one from a Japanese submarine, I-26, which apparently hit close enough to the ammunition storage to cause a massive explosion, and the ship went down rather quickly. Believing all hands to be lost and not really wanting to stick around and risk losing more ships, Captain Gilbert Hoover, who was in charge of the fleet, gave order to continue on, signaling to a B-17 that they came across to radio about the sinking ship and the need for a rescue mission. Here's the problem. That B-17 was ordered to maintain radio silence, so they couldn't tell anybody until they landed, which is what happened. And even after they reported it, the report was lost in the paperwork shuffle, and it took several days before it was even noticed. Meanwhile, about 100 men had actually survived the ship going down, including two of the Sullivans, Al and George. However, they were then left to the elements floating in the Pacific Ocean for eight days, dealing with dehydration, the sun, and, of course, sharks. Some using life preservers, others in rafts. Al died from drowning, and George, according to accounts, kind of lost it dealing with his brother's deaths. Also, supposedly, he drank too much seawater. Yeah, don't do that and is said to have gone overboard and was last seen swimming back towards the wreckage. No one's seen him since, and there's no way he would have survived. By the time all the survivors were rescued, only 10 men were left, 687 being lost. And unfortunately, the Sullivan parents found out about their sons all at once in January of 1943. President Franklin Roosevelt sent them a personal letter of condolences. Pope Pius XII also sent his condolences along with a rosary and a silver medal. The Sullivans became heroes, their parents speaking at rallies and factories, posters proclaiming the brothers' sacrifice pushed military recruitment. Even Genevieve ended up joining WAVES, the Women's Navy Reserve Corps, in a non-combat role. Sadly, losing multiple children was way too often an occurrence during the war. Two of the four Nyland brothers died, though for a time it was believed that one of the survivors had died but was instead a POW. The Borgstra brothers, Leroy, Clyde, Roland, and Rulon, all served and were killed in separate incidents over a six-month period. Two of the men who had also died on the Juno were Patrick and Louis Rogers, yes brothers, and their other two brothers had recently transferred off the ship. So otherwise, if they hadn't, they also would have died. Hell, two weeks after the sinking of the Juno, the three Rogers brothers, completely separate from the other Rogers brothers, by the way, were killed in action aboard the USS New Orleans. These events, and others, led to the creation of the Lone Survivor Policy in 1948, wherein someone can be excused from military duty if one or more of their siblings has died in duty. Also, the USS Rogers is named after the brothers from the New Orleans and the Sullivans. Well, they've got two ships named after them. 